delving into color now. You've made a color wheel, which was great. Now we're gonna do a little exercise where we're gonna experiment with just mixing some colors. I just went to the hardware store and I, I pulled a couple of paint swatches and I'm just gonna try to mix these colors. I've laid out all of my paint swatches and we're gonna mix and see if we can get close. Let's start with this brown right here in the middle. Brown is a combination of our three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So we'll start with that and see where it gets us. Oh, wow. Dang, that was pretty close. It's almost right on. You know, the, the one on my swatch is a little bit more red. So I'm gonna add just a tick of red. Huh. I think we're there. Snap! It's that easy, I promise. Let's see. I'm gonna get some on my brush. It's a little dark. I'm gonna add a tick of yellow first. I don't want to lighten it up that much. That's pretty close. That's close. All right, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do this green. Get this out of my way here. Let's try this green. So green, we want to get green. That's a combination of blue and yellow. The green that I have here is um, a little more neutral. It's not so full of chroma. The color isn't quite as pure. So if I have a green and I want to neutralize it a little bit to get closer to this foresty, olivey color, I'm going to add a tick of red. That's going to neutralize it. It's getting there. It's getting there. This is uh, maybe a little more blue and it's slightly lighter yeah you know it's slightly lighter you always want to try to add another color before you add white because if you use white all the time every time you try to lighten the color all your paintings will start to look chalky <laughs> so try to lighten it with a different color first so I used, I used a little tick of yellow in there. I want to get my olivey color back in there. Little tick of red. This is how you discover colors, little ticks. And mix in the end. Don't mix it into the whole entire pile because then, boy, will you have a big pile. Just go off the end until you get it right. And then when you feel like, oh, I hit the combination, that's what I needed, then you can go back in and do a bigger pile. So I think to get close to this, I mean, I added just a tick more blue. I'm going to go into my white. Just add a little bit to it. A little, little. That's pretty close. That's good enough. It's in the neighborhood. All right. Let's clean it up and try a different one. Oh, you know, I'm going to leave some of that green there because I have it there. So why not? Now this one is pretty, um, there's a lot more yellow in there and there's more white in there. It's lighter and it's more yellow. We only have our, basically our primary and secondary colors out here. So, um, you know, there's going to be some, some places we just can't get to with our limited palette, and that's okay. Um, if you have that phthalo green on your palette or that viridian, add it into this mixture just at like the slightest tick because it's a really strong color and see what it does. And ooh, ha ha, we're so getting closer. I added a little bit more white. I'm going to add one more little tick of yellow. Can you see what that little tick of Viridian did in turning that color, bending your color? 
Mm. I think it was Monet that said, color is my day long joy and torment. Something along those lines. All right, that's pretty close, I think. That's pretty close. Oh, I had some blue. A little more yellow. Oh, too much yellow. It wasn't a tick. It was a glob. Mm. <laughs> I went overboard. Can you hear the thunder? We're gonna have a good storm outside. That's that's close enough. That'll that'll do. That'll do. Okay, let's try let's try a purple. Purple, you know from your color wheel, is a combination of blue and red. So I'll start with that. I know that makes a purple. My purple's pretty dark here. I'm going to add a little bit of white because I know it is way too dark. Wow, and that's pretty close right there. Ha! Nice when you nail it once in a while. Yeah, that is close enough. All right. Let's move on. Let's try this, this aqua. Now I think we can, we can only maybe come close to this because we have phthalo green or um, viridian. Those transparent colors are wildly beautiful and really strong. A little will go a long way. So let's see what we need. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna move this one into the middle. Um, it's kind of a greenish blue. Hmm. It's pretty light. So that might be about the same value, but there's definitely, I'm going to put a little tick, a little tick to this phthalo. It's getting there. A little bit more. A little bit more. And if I if I add a lighter color to this, if I go down to, to try to lighten it up, I can tell just by looking at it, it needs a little tick of white. Um, huh, that's pretty good. Yeah, we'll call it done. It could even go a little bit lighter. We have three colors left. We got three swatches left. One of the tricks here, as we mentioned earlier, is to set up your palette in the same way every time. I go from white to yellow to orange to red to blue, and then I have my transparent uh, phthalo green and alizarin crimson on the edge for my darks, um, or sometimes to just arrive at the color I want. But if they're in the spot every time, then you know how to get to it quickly. All right, so let's go into this mustardy looking thing. So again, it's kind of a brown. How do we get to the browns? We mix our three primaries together and that gives us brown. So this one here definitely has more yellow in it. That's getting closer. I'm gonna add just a little bit of Orange, oh, we went green. All right, let's go back to yellow. That's still pretty green. I need a little blue and a little red. Again, I'm off to the edge. I'm not mixing this into my giant pile. This helps me also see what happens when I do what. When I've done this, this is what happened. When I did this, I, this is what happened. When I do this, that's what happens. So. If you, if you separate them a little bit as you move along, then you'll come upon it. You're like, oh, there it is. There it is. That's getting pretty close. I'm going to add a, uh, a, a little bit. I think it needs more red. This is a hard one. Oh, we're getting, we're getting there. That's getting closer. That's getting closer. 
a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow. Oh, I'll see how that warmed up. Mmm. Skies are warming up too. <laughs> That's pretty good. Look at that. We're there. We'll call that one done. So we have a darker brown. So I wonder, let's just take the same pile that we were working in and make it darker and warmer. So darker and warmer. We're gonna use blue and red. Oh, that's pretty. I think I need a little more yellow. I need a little more blue. There we go, we're getting there. The more you do this, the easier it gets. And when you first start to work with all of these colors and you're trying to remember everything that's going on out there, you stop and think to yourself a lot, like, oh, I have to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of exercise for your brain. Um, but it also helps you start to think and see in new ways. You start to notice little things and notice colors and notice shifts and notice warmth and coolness and light shadow and it's wonderful. But the more you do it, then you don't, you don't spend so much time thinking about it. You spend more time doing it and you kind of get into the flow of it. And that's, that's why we paint is to be in the flow of it. So the more you do it, the easier it is to flow in it. All right. So we got really pretty close there. I'm adding a little tick of white because, um, and a little tick of yellow. And I think we arrived. Yeah, that works. All right. So we're just down to this orangey color. Let's see. I have this existing pile. We're going to do this two ways. I'm going to take some orange and mix it into this muted color that I already have on my palette. And boy, that comes pretty close, doesn't it? It's too dark. Take a little tick of yellow and a little tick of white. It's still too brown. Yellow and orange. It's getting a little closer. It's getting a little closer. Ooh! I love thunder and lightning. I love it. All that power going on out there. All this power going on in here. We're vibing with the universe right now. If I get to stay in and paint all day while there's a thunderstorm going on outside, I'm a happy girl. Oh, that's pretty close. Yeah, all right. So we made that sort of out of the pile that we had. Let's start fresh. I'm gonna put, it's basically orange. I'm gonna start with a little bit of orange. It's a little too bright and pure. We need to neutralize it a little bit and darken it up a little bit. So if I wanted to neutralize orange, I could just go to the other side of the color wheel. Maybe take a little tick of blue, little tick of red. That neutralized the color, a little bit more blue, a little tick of red. Yikes, Mundo, gotta um, throw some orange back in there. There we go. Great, that'll work. So that's the basic color mixing exercise. Get some swatches from the hardware store or you can just find random things around your house that are of varied colors and do your best to mix it up and paint it. The nice thing about the swatches is you can paint right on them and then adjust your colors. 
It's a really nice way to get very well acquainted with your paint and your color and how to mix it and what one color does to another color, how to bend colors without the added complexity of actually creating a painting. This is a wonderful, fun exercise. So 